Well, hello there, and welcome again, Derpy Hoops News listeners. We have, or er, we have yet another edition of Artist of the Week, and this week's spotlighted artist is Schoon, the moderator of the blog, or the Ask Charlie and the Ask Barry Punch blogs. How are you doing tonight, Schoon? Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Well, uh, Schoon, Schoon has come here, and he's uh, he's agreed to uh, answer a few questions here for us. So, without further ado, let's uh, let's get right into this. Uh, the first question I have for you is, uh, how long have you been into art? Well, I actually started drawing when I was a little kid. I started out by doodling Mario in the insides of coloring book covers. And uh, I, I probably did fan art of Mario for years and years. And at about the time I turned 12, I actually started getting really serious about it and started practicing anatomy. And I always, I, I always loved painting uh looking at paintings i liked other artists paintings but personally i always like to draw a cartooning style so i have a pretty a pretty interesting mix i personally do cartooning but i appreciate paint painting um how uh, just kind of kind of speaking on that um have, how how long have you uh, done digital art to do was the was there a transition I, there from traditional to to digital or I started doing digital uh, about the time, I want to say last fall, I think. The beginning of last fall is when I, the very first time I ever used a tablet. It has not been very long. Oh, really? Really. Hmm. I've, I've, I did traditional my entire life up to that point, other than uh, I would flood fill colors on drawings I did by hand, but I don't think that really counts too much. <laughs> um, what, do, you, do you prefer one, one over the other, or do you, do, you, do you really have a preference at all? I love to sketch in traditional, but I absolutely despise inking in traditional. <laughs> so I guess overall I prefer doing digital because inking, you know, you, you can make a terrible mistake and just undo it. And that's the greatest gift ever. I swear the first time I did it, a light came down from heaven onto my monitor and the angel choir sang and I hit control and I believe it's Z and the line went away and all was well with the world. <laughs> oh, interesting, interesting. Um, how, how did you learn how to create art? Did you have any formal training, uh, anything like that? I am 100% self-taught. Wow. Do you do you think, or have you have you ever had any interest in in going to an art school, or thought about that at all? Uh, that, that is a little bit of a loaded question because I have probably hours worth of opinions on art schools. Ah. Uh, I don't know. I I've always figured that I could be at my best if I just learned it myself because for me personally I think that's what works best for a lot of people being taught works best and I know there's some other people like myself as well and it's really just up to the individual for me I I prefer to learn it myself so it's kind of a to each his own or to each his own kind of uh, kind of deal exactly okay um, when when did you uh, when did you start drawing ponies I uh, I'm going to assume just the G4 ponies. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we we can go we can go farther back than that if you know, it's part well, of the story. When I was a when I was a teenager, early, well, I, I won't even say teenager. I'd probably say 10 or 11. I uh, I used to do it all the old ponies and with my sister and uh, my sister used to make fun of me and throw her GI Joe dolls at me. It was really fun. <laughs> but the uh yeah, uh I used to draw the old ones back then, and, but as far as doing it now, I would say about the about the time I discovered the G4 show existed, which was near the end of season one's run, because I didn't know it was out there until after my roommate had pointed it out to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I first set eyes on it, I fell back in love with the franchise and started drawing Fluttershy everywhere, and that's kind of where it started. It's been about a year now, I think. 
So you mentioned Fluttershy, but the uh, uh, the the two or the ponies that you've kind of chosen. Why why did you choose uh, those particular ponies for your uh, your tumblers? Well, with Berry Punch became one of my new favorites. I I uh, I don't really know what exactly it was that drew her drew me to her, other than. At the see at the time Barry at the time that I started the Tumblr Barry Punch was barely known as Barry Punch. She was still being called the overprotective pony parent, <laughs> and uh, the the whole personality she had was very. There really was no personality. I kind of just adopted her and made her something. I actually have the oldest Barry Punch blog. I uh, the I think what first drew me in were the colors, because I love that shade of whatever that is on her. <laughs> it's like a pinkish, purplish magenta, maybe. It's really a decent color. I, it's, I think the color is what attracted me to the pony in the background first. And then uh, I found that she had, a, she had a daughter, and then there was this drinking thing, and I was just like, wow, this is, this is a story. This is gold for story, so I went along with her. And then with Charlie, uh, Charlie was always my favorite, even before G4 existed. Um, it was the pigtails, you see, that won me over. Ah. The, because uh, that's just adorable. <laughs> but the, uh, and when I found out that she was in G4, you know, yeah. old favorites die hard. So, and uh, the third blog I run, Naughty Luna, that one came to me when I did a Barry Punch update because there was this big joke going around about Luna and unshorn fetlocks. And uh, so I drew this really creepy Luna following Barry Punch around, and then I thought, why don't I make this a character? So that's how that one came about as well. What, what do you enjoy about running uh, Ask Blogs and Tumblers like that? Well, it's really fun because I, I get to express my sense of humor and uh, it gives me an excuse to draw something both simple and fun to look at. And I get to experiment with things. And it, it's it's like a testing ground for artistic styles. And I actually get to do little experiments with those blogs because they don't have to be perfect. So I don't have to worry about, you know, messing anything up too bad. Because uh, a lot of times I get a new idea or a new method art-wise and I can experiment with it on the blog and then carry over to my other work. And uh, at the same time, I'm keeping my sense of humor up, which is, you know, if you don't have anybody to tell jokes to, eventually you get really bad at it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I just, and I love, I love making people laugh, and I love making people sit back and go, what did I just look at? <laughs> and so uh, the blogs are just like the best way to do that. And I love, I love getting some interesting creative questions as well. I love to see what other people can come up with in hopes that I can uh, match that with a response. Um, one so of, it's interactive, too. One, one, of the, uh, one of the bigger things that, that actually uh, kind of tr or made waves in the, uh, the Tumblr scene was the, uh, the marriage storyline. Can you tell us a little, bit, a little bit about that and how that came about? Yeah, actually, uh, I can tell you exactly how it came about. I was on the uh, artist chat on Skype one night with Sugar Plum, who runs one of the Colgates. Uh, she's also known as a Shashi. Uh, she she loved my Berry Punch, and I loved her Colgate, and we both talked about that night. Well, why don't we make the blogs um, come together? We'll you know, make them canonical with each other. And uh, we both decided it would be awesome if we threw this big wedding for Colgate and Barry, and that's exactly how it came about. And then Hawk Claire, who does the Pinchy blog, got it in on it as well and uh that's it's still going it's been slow there's been a lot of uh behind the scenes hang-ups or uh delays if you will mm -hmm. but it is still going it's not uh it has not been forgotten and the big wedding picture that we're working on is actually being worked on now 
All right, excellent. Um, what what other directions do you plan on taking these characters? Where where do you where would you like to see these tumblers go? Well, uh, I usually just sort of make it up as I go along, but I'm playing with a couple of ideas for Cheerilee. I'm throwing the idea in my head back and forth of actually putting her together with Big Mac in the blog. Hmm. I I know I know I've also. I have some interesting ideas for Naughty Luna, but I can't I can't reveal them because they're, you know, well they would they would no longer be interesting. So no, that's true. Uh, you got to keep some secrets. So. As far as Barry, Barry's fun because I can just go anywhere I want to at whatever point with Barry. So I always leave her very open ended, and often she becomes the easiest to write for because of that. So it's usually I just follow my heart with them. Okay. Um, how, have, uh, how have the ponies changed the way you think as an artist? What, what kind of has inspired you about them? Well, uh, that's a... I have to think about that one. That, you know, I, they're just so cheerful. And I don't think... I, I can't remember being part of anything that was just so cheerful looking and enjoying it so much. But at the same time, all that wonderful cheerfulness makes all the drama even more dramatic. So storytelling becomes this. It's a, it's a gem for storytelling because you would never expect these bad things to happen in such a sunny world. So it, like, it hits the, the reader or the viewer more. And as somebody who loves to uh, create and write, it's, it's like a perfect, you know, uh, it's a perfect testing ground. Uh, as to how they inspired me exactly, I, I don't know. They just did, probably because they're really adorable. Well, it's a, it's a good, good enough answer for me. Um, have they, have they affected your life at all in general? Uh, yeah, I, I'd say so. I actually quite a bit. I, I'm not nearly as much of a uh, surly curmudgeon as I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd have to say I have a lot more friends now than I think I ever have. Um, there's something about the message of self-betterment that uh, has kind of sunk in with me, and a few other people, too. And uh, it also kind of gave me the courage to go back to being who I was, because when I was a kid, I didn't care, you know. I was just me. But when I grew up, suddenly society's pressures made me you know, close up into this little corner. But this stuff sort of brought me back out, and I would never take it back. Because um, uh, everybody seems to have such fun together, and everybody seems a little more bold and a little more brave to be themselves. And I think it did that for a lot of people. It did it for me. Well, that's, a, that's, or that's, a great, uh, that's a great story, to be completely honest. Um I, I guess to, to step away from the uh, the art world for a little while. What uh, do you do? You have any hobbies or, or jobs or anything that you do besides doing artwork? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm an enormous nerd gamer. <laughs> uh, I, I stick to a lot of classic stuff. I'm huge into RPGs. And I love fighting games. Um, and I'm also a, I'm a novice writer. I'm trying to get better at that. I do have my own project that's been in the works for years that if it ever actually comes to fruition, then someone's on my side because huzzah. Uh, but you, uh, Could you tell us a little bit more about that, the, the project, like what, what it's about? Oh, yeah. It's, it, it's all original characters, all original story. It's, it's, it's got a furry setting to it. Um, it's a, it's a very new take on a post-apocalyptic world. And it kind of goes down the route. I drew a lot of inspiration for it from Final Fantasy VI, hmm. as far as a as a setting. Uh, it's really hard to say because I, uh, well, other than the fact that I keep rewriting parts of it, the uh, if I if I were to start talking about it, I'm afraid I would actually go for far too long. <laughs> other so I. Uh, I, th I think I'll have to leave that for another time. Maybe I'll write about it sometime and post it up on Tumblr for anybody who's interested. Okay. Do you, do you have maybe like a name, or have you thought of a a name at all? If uh, if people wanted to go look this or look this up in the future, or 
Right now it's it's called Axel Nine, and that's just A X L zero nine. Okay. Uh, that's the title right now, and all all the characters in it you can actually find in various positions on my various art sites, furry art sites. You can find all sorts of the characters and little tidbits about it. Well, that's it, or that that's very interesting, though. Um, so, or besides the uh, uh, that that or Axel Nine and the uh, uh, the wedding stuff, do you do you have any uh, any big future projects that you're excited about? Uh, none come to mind other than just mundane real life stuff. You know, okay. I'd like to get the roof fixed on my trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, you know, you gotta keep a roof over your head first. That's the that's the number one priority. So that's the goal. <laughs> what what would be your uh, your favorite project that you've ever worked on? Oh wow, I would actually honestly have to say the Berry Punch blog. Okay, do you have any or any any particular reason why you like that that one the best? Well, it brought people to me. As an artist, it you know it got my name out there, and uh, it connected me with a new character. It's always fun to develop a new character, and uh, of all three blogs, it's the one that I have the most fun looking back through because it's been around so long now that it's like a walk down memory lane. <laughs> Especially since there's so many other blogs I used to interact with that don't exist anymore, you know. So it's kind of nostalgic to me now. Yeah. Um, I, I guess as a as a final question here, um, what what advice would you give to uh, to new artists that that would want to want to break into the art field? Well, the best advice I could give, and the best advice I think anybody could give, is just keep working at it. Never give up, ever, because if you give up, you fail. But you can fail over and over, and as long as you don't get up, give up, as long as you don't give up, it's not a true failure because you'll keep going and you'll get better and you'll get there. You just gotta, it's just perseverance and hard work. That's all there is to it. All right, excellent, good advice. So, um, well, that that was all the uh, the questions that I have here for you tonight. Uh, was there anything else that uh, that you'd like to add before we let you go? Don't die. That that was decent advice too. <laughs> good, good for all ages, all you know, everybody. Well, we, of course, I'd like to thank you for for taking the time out to interview me. Well, we we'd like to thank you for uh, for taking for taking your time yourself and coming out and and sharing a little bit or a little bit of uh, of you out here. So, anytime. Th thank you for your time. And thank you. <laughs>